Disney parks are chock full of countless things to look at and admire. From the black spires of Batu to the glimmering castle at the end of a 19th century main street. But just as important as the things you do notice are the sights, sounds and even smells that you don't. But these are all fundamental ways that Disney tricks you into immersing within their worlds. And certain strategies are even shown to boost their sales without you even noticing it. So today, let's explore some things that Disney has cleverly hidden in plain sight. So that next time you're in a Disney theme park, you can point them out and truly impress your friends. Disney Imagineers have long strived to do the impossible. And whilst we don't yet have invisibility cloaks, they came up with something that may be just as good. You've heard about it before. Disney's aggressively named and specifically formulated Go Away Green that allows things they don't want you to see to blend in with the scenery. Whilst you may know about Disney using it at the theme parks in the modern day, did you know that the usage of Go Away Green extends all the way back to the opening day of Disneyland? Since that day, the color has been used to try to hide things from the smallest of speakers to the largest of show buildings and is in fact not a single color, but a collective group of shades of green that Disney uses depending on the foliage around the object to be painted. Go Away Green was designed by Disney to effectively erase things from guests' eyesight by using a color that both blends into the natural surroundings around them and is generally ignored by your natural eyesight. Next time you're in a Disney park, See just how many things you can count that utilize this color scheme, from trash cans to light poles to construction walls, and of course, the backsides of buildings. While Go Away Green is the granddaddy of Disney's disappearing colors, in recent years they have also begun to use a new color called Blending Blue, that varies significantly between Disneyland and Disney World. This color is designed to blend in with the sky when seen from across the park, and can be recognized on show buildings such as Soren and Guardians of the Galaxy at Epcot, lovingly dubbed the Big Blue Box. Even more recent than Blending Blue is whatever is seen on the backside of the Tron show building, which I think we will lovingly dub Glaringly Obvious Grey. You've probably noticed that surrounding you at all times in Disney theme parks is music. It's part of the experience. And I think you'd struggle to find an area that doesn't have some form of audio ambiance. But you've probably noticed that oftentimes the speakers outside of Main Street USA are relatively difficult to find. It's not uncommon to find them in rocks covered by a mesh, behind bushes, or even in buildings with fake walls. It can be a game in itself to spot these hidden features around the park, especially security cameras that they put in extra effort to hide. And looking for them helps showcase the many ways that Disney hides objects in plain sight. Whilst Go Away Green can be perfect for hiding smaller speakers used for atmospheric audio throughout the lands, how do you hide a massive speaker system that needs to be utilized for giant spectaculars with much louder audio requirements? Tokyo Disney Sea has a rather spectacular way of achieving this. Around the Mediterranean Harbor at the park and the rivers of America at Disneyland are these cleverly hidden speaker systems that can arise out of the ground when required for shows and then quietly be hidden away again once they are done. At Tokyo Disney Sea, if you didn't know what you were looking for, it would be almost impossible to notice these speaker hatches when the speakers are down. This effect is achieved similarly for Fantasmic at Disneyland, where the entire lighting rigs are brought out of the ground just in time for the show. Alongside this, Disney uses an ingenious way of hiding other infrastructure towers such as phone signal towers. I'm not kidding when I say that they hide these as trees, but we'll get to that later. You know what isn't hiding in plain sight though? You! Luckily this week's sponsor NordVPN is like go away green for your internet browsing, designed to keep you and your personal data safe when browsing online. Anywhere in the world on any Wi-Fi network, 
on up to six devices. VPNs aren't just for keeping you safe online though. And one of my recent uses of NordVPN was to watch the making of Jurassic World Velocicoaster documentary on Peacock, a service usually not available here in Australia. With NordVPN though, a few clicks made me virtually in the USA and able to watch. To celebrate NordVPN's 10th birthday, go to nordvpn.com forward slash review time to get a two year plan with an exclusive deal plus one free month and also a bonus gift. And thanks to NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee, it's completely risk free. So keep yourself safe with this incredible deal at nordvpn.com forward slash review time. Look at the top of any tall structure at Disney World and you will see these little sticks poking out. Some are well hidden and some not so much. But all of them are lightning rods designed to attract and ground lightning before it damages the park or one of the guests. One of the most unique lightning rod locations is along Main Street USA, where the rods are cleverly disguised as flags, fitting in with the backstory of the land where it's always the 4th of July. While some people may say these flags have fewer stars or stripes due to them not wanting to have to take them down during rainstorms, this isn't quite true. As thematically it is appropriate to the number of stars the flags would have had during the turn of the century when this land is set. My favorite lightning rod though has to be at the crossroads of the world at the entrance to Disney's Hollywood Studios, where the five foot three Mickey, making him taller than someone who could play him in the parks, has his right ear completely made of copper to serve as a lightning rod. Today, more than ever, it's important to have phone service while you're at the Disney theme parks. However, to have phone reception, you often have to have large, unsightly cell towers. But if you look around the Disney theme parks, these towers are usually nowhere to be seen. And that's because a number of them are carefully blending into their surroundings as giant, larger than normal trees. The two most obvious examples of these are the ones behind the Grand Floridian Hotel, which can be seen from the Magic Kingdom monorail station, and the one at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park, which can be seen towering over the tree line as you pull into the parking lot. But these aren't the only two. So next time you see a towering tree near a Disney park, have a closer look to see if it's actually natural. Another thing Disney hides in plain sight has nothing to do with sight and instead with sound. When walking around Sunset Boulevard at Disney's Hollywood Studios, it's impossible to miss the constant screaming coming from that fateful drop on the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It makes sense. This is a terrifying drop, faster than the speed of gravity. But the screams aren't completely real, as speakers around the tower actually pump in artificial scream sounds synced with the ride's drop sequence, designed to draw your attention to the tower and begins the sense of unease and fear before you even step into the queue. Speaking of hidden sounds designed to grab your attention, a similar thing is employed at Test Track, where the cars are being fitted with a device designed to enhance and amplify the sounds the Test Track cars make as they zoom around the show building. This helps to inform guests of what the attraction is, due to the difficulty of seeing the ride vehicle's speed before you're on the attraction. Sights and sounds are greatly important to your theme park experience, one that's often forgotten about is smell. I'm fairly certain that the smell of caramel popcorn is still stuck in my nose from Disneyland to this day. When walking down Main Street, you may be allured by that smell of freshly popped popcorn or even the bright smell of citrus when entering the Polynesian. These smells though are carefully selected and spread throughout the park using a device called a smellitzer. That sweet candy smell outside the confectionery isn't actually coming from freshly made treats, but instead from a fan blowing over some scent pellets coming out of a vent near your feet. These smells serve a multitude of purposes, from truly making you feel like you're soaring over the orange groves of California, to really making it feel like you need that churro right now. While Disney does pack its parks full of enjoyable smells, 
just take a moment to think about that poor Imagineer who had to spend days of his life smelling scent pods to find that perfect stench for the stink bug smell. And it's tough to be a bug. As you can see, the things Disney manages to hide from you are just as important as the things it wants you to see. Theme parks are a ballet of incredibly immersive areas mixed with the boring realities of life that have to exist. And I think Disney has perfectly found ways to hide these things without removing the magic. But over to you. What are your favorite things Disney has managed to hide in plain sight? Let us know in the comments section. From the home of all things theme parks, I'm Luke for Review Time. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Review Time. If so, be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out our podcast, Review Time's Theme Park Cast, available on your podcasting platform of choice.